Now, this is a fairly lengthy essay, so what I'm reading to you is the first section of it, um, part of the first section of it. So that's where the excerpt comes from, so you're not going to really miss anything. Learning to speak chocolate. My vigilant recruiter had nabbed the W-2 requisition when it slid across his desk. You'd be perfect for this. Great fit. Yellow cabs, pretzel carts, my own chased briefcase, reflected off the spinning window panes. Suited, slick-haired gentry, cued and carouseled through the doors. Rockefeller Center Management Corporation's Purchasing Department, Avenue of the Americas, 1980s, New York City. In my early 20s, I'm proud of landing my first post at a corporate powerhouse. I arrived flushed with anticipation. Rode the suave mirrored elevator to the eighth floor. After meeting the office staff, my enthusiasm cooled. Bearing toothy grins, the purchasing assistant and office manager mentioned that my associate, Jana, was hard of hearing. Actually, she was sort of hearing impaired. The truth of the matter was, she could not hear very much at all. To get right down to it, she was deaf, more or less. They went on to explain that listening devices afforded her trivial assistance, but these were large and ungainly. Jenna was proud and often forgot to wear them. When she did wear them, they rendered no support whatever, unless folks were standing directly before her. Without the aid, she was sheathed in silence. My colleagues showed me the front and shout practice they used to arrest Jana's attention. In her immediate sight line, magnified gestures could work as well, if you were deaf at charades. Jana was not due in for another hour. I tried to settle at my desk, which, disconcertingly, was adjacent to hers. I stowed my supplies, studied the staff directory, and gave my typewriter a whirl before Jana arrived. A first glance revealed her to be in her 50s, a stout, graying blonde, round glasses, worn leather purse. She halted when she saw me. I read her telegraph. No one had apprised her that I was coming on board. What percentage of the office's daily grind, water cooler gossip, eluded her? On how many inside jokes was she left on the outside? Sally, the office manager, introduced me to Jana in a loud yell. The hearing aids were truant. Sally repeated my name, Fortissimo Voci, to no avail. She would resort it to air spelling. L-I-Z-E-T. Judd doused me, then flooded, then brimmed, crested, slopped over. I foresaw, foresaw Torturous hours of missed messages, failed connections, faulty wiring. The two of us hard pressed to morph into a productive duo. My first few weeks, we finessed the situation through ignoring one another. I avoided having to speak with her. Eye contact? No. For a while, our gambit worked. I diverted large wedges of time to orientation and training. Short term, our silent settlement was tenable. Destiny dropped during my third week. A compulsory matter arose requiring Jana's input. I ambled over to her desk and planted directly in front of it. She looked up. I put my question to her in a high-pitched voice, then tried again one notch higher. I, not a consummate yeller. She, not a proficient lip reader. When I glanced around the office for help, eyes and heads were trained, most earnestly, on selectrics, notepads, and screens. No lifeline here. A full 10 minutes elapsed before I was able to convey one sentence and a related question. Sweat rolled from my hairline, seared my eyes. My exchanges with Jana remained fraught with dark reckoning. I loathed having to engage her. Chagrin curtained our desks off from one another. Stubbornness added another panel. Richard, the sequestered backroom tech whiz, emerged on a steamy afternoon and decreed an ice cream dash. As keeper of the petty cash, I offered to do a dairy cream run. 
Folks called out their orders, parfaits, cones, popsicles, blizzards. Jana sat oblivious at her desk. I waited for Sally to mention Jana, perhaps approach, and find out which street she wanted. But Sally didn't, nor did anyone else. From my top drawer, I removed a cube of green sticky notes, drew an ice cream cone on the top sheet, placed a large question mark after the cone, walked over. With a flat palm, I owned the note onto her invoice heap. She jumped, startled. She stripped the note off, gauged it for a beat. Her eyes met, and we broke into wide grins. She spoke, scarred syllables stirring. I could seize one word, chocolate. It was enough. Thank you.